Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima and today we will be talking about the advantage and disadvantage of using BDD uh, on a mix of what, I, what is in the literature and my experience uh, in, in both approaches, like uh, when it was a good experience and when it was not and why was that the case. So we have been talking about uh, uh, BDD in the last two videos in, in API in, in, in as a whole. So I'll be posting the links for those videos so you can keep it up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so, so you can keep watching and you can keep receiving the notification, hit the bell so you can actually receive the notification for uh, the videos, right? So let's start. Yeah, so let's talk about the, the advantage of using uh, BDD, right? So the BDD is going to be used as the acceptance tests. You're going to write as I, I, I showed in the, in the last video with the three amigos, with the three friends, three per people involved in, in the creation of the requirements, which would be the, the scenarios and therefore the acceptance tests. And going to be used in the, those scenarios as acceptance tests. This is what I mean. It's going to be executable ex spec specifications because as we're going to see further now in, in next videos, those scenarios are going to be executed uh, by, in this case, we're going to use Cucumber. Uh, and those are going to be executable and you're going to know if something passed or failed and therefore it's, it's going to be better for maintaining it up to date. It's also easy to understand, right? Of course, if you write in a, in a very, if you write thinking on the business and not and not thinking on, on the system itself, like in the step by step, but I'm going to go deeper on this when you talk about specification by example, but it's definitely easy to understand because you're going to be writing in a common language. It's not code. So anyone in the project can understand regardless of the technical skills. Uh, can be used to onboard new team members, right? So we can use that to onboard new team members. Uh, when a person comes in, you can say, hey, just read the, those scenarios there and you're going to understand what the system does in a nutshell, uh, what is the business, what, what we're trying to solve, and that would be a nice kickstart to start the onboarding of those people. It's flexible, right? So you have a lot of flexibility, although it adds an extra layer of autom uh, in, the, in the automation, right? Because if you do not have Cucumber, you will just write your code uh, straight in whatever language you, you use. Uh, and Cucumber adds a extra layer, but there is a lot of flexibility there. You can do a lot of stuff, right? There are various ways that you can use. I'm also going to be going over those as well. The disadvantages, right? Um, most of the time they are used as functional tests and functional tests can be flaky, especially if they are UI tests because we have to deal with weights. Uh, the feature might take too long to run because again, most of them, most of the time they're used to as a uh, functional test. Therefore, you're going to be, you're going to have a lot of those maybe. Uh, and then if you have a lot of those, it's going to take a long time to run and that's not ideal. You, you, like, you, you want to move forward into have, having a fast feedback. Uh, so whoever is developing that application has had a shorter window of time to see if that those, their changes broke something or not. Uh, business, business folks might not read the scenarios, right? So. Although BDD uh, and Cucumber were made for the business, to, for non-technical people to understand, aka business folks, uh, they might not read it. So you might end up only the, the, the devs and the QAs, the technical folks, uh, maintaining and reading and caring about those. And that's not ideal, right? Because again, Cucumber, BDD was made for the interaction with the business. If the, if the business does not care, then I would say you need to uh, make a decision if it's if, if it's whether good or not to have uh, BDD. And I'm going to go over those, uh, some of my experience when I felt it was not worth it. Uh, 
uh, insert an extra layer. That's what, what I, I, I talked briefly. It's going to exert, insert a extra layer uh, in your code. Um, and you're going to have to start thinking on how you write the scenarios, what is a good scenario to be written, or how it's a good scenario written, and all of those take takes time, right? And uh, if the business folks does not care, then the next extra layer, I think, is worthless uh, because you can actually write. So one might say this is a live documentation. This is going to be good for onboarding. That's true. But if you have a good written code, I'm going to go over that when you're doing implementation. If you have a good written code as well, uh, with a good design, uh, good method names, uh, variable names, if you have a good strategy on writing the code, then the, your code is, is readable enough for someone to understand what that is doing in a nutshell without having to go through the whole code. And if you do that, then I don't see that Cucumber is going to help you much if you do not have the, the business folks are maintaining those or helping or have the three friends, the three amigos. Right, can be used uh, erroneously as data strategy. So uh, we talk about in the advantage that has a lot of flexibility and with great powers comes great responsibility. So you you can very easily insert use cucumber to put data because you you can you can have a table you can have a, a a list you can have a map you can have a bunch of stuff there and it's very easy for you to do that in cucumber and use cucumber to send the data to the code but then it's going it's going to be really hard to read your scenario understand what it's doing if you are sending the code the the data from cucumber to the to the code and in 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 the long term maintaining that it's going to be extra hard you're going to have a lot of duplication because some tests might use the same data so you're going to duplicating you're going to be duplicating a lot of data so that's also not ideal great and uh let's go over more of uh as like phrases right um so let's bring some more extra phrases of ASLAC. So you see that I'm using those uh, as I go over some topics, right? So if you if you think Cucumber is a testing tool, you are wrong. When Cucumber is adopted solely as a tool to write automated tests without any input from business anal analyst, analyst, analysts, they tend to become imperative and lose their documentation value. So this is what we, we just talked about previously a little bit, right? So if the business doesn't care, only people maintaining, uh, only the, the dev and the QA, the technical folks are going to be maintaining. And he goes a little bit further here saying that it's going to lose the documentation value because although you're still going to have those scenarios to be used as documentation, but how accurate are those documentation, right? If the business is not interacting and help you, help you create those and, and going over those and review those, then it's not going to be a, a, a real documentation because it's not actually mapping the real business. There is a certain amount of ceremony involved with Cucumber. There is both working and step definitions to maintain. This can be justified if it improves collaboration and reduces misunderstandings. But if the tool is used in a vacuum, those benefits will ob obviously never happen. So this is what I meant by uh, extra layer. You're going to have an extra layer that you're going to have to deal with. Uh, in my case, uh, uh, when, I'm, when I mean extra layer, I mean specifically the gherkin that you're going to be writing because the step automation, the step definition is is uh it's a code right in, the, in our case it's going to be java code and that, that would be the same as you have in plain old j unit code there so uh that's why i say one extra layer and not both of those because regardless if you're going to be using gherkin or not or, or cucumber not for automation you're still going to have to deal with some sort of thing similar to a step definition Great. So 
let's go over now some of my experience when I use, I think I'm going to be bringing three cases uh, where I use uh, three cases in which I use Cucumber in, in the past. So BDD, right? Uh, first of all, it's what the explanation we had. Uh, the division of the team was we had a dev team, we have a test automation team, we had a QA team for scenarios writing and manual tests, and we use that Cucumber uh, and BDD for UI and API tests. So see, we, we had a division of one dev team and you have another team doing the automation and you had a QA team doing this, writing the scenarios and manual tests. So the, te the scenario that was written by the automation team was created, uh, were created by the QA team. So a lot of separation there, right? So the BDD process, and I'm putting in quotes because you see, I didn't, uh, had so many separations, right? And one team, uh, not everybody was involved. Only this team was involved with the business folks. The business were actually involved, but uh, manual QA and business analysts wrote the scenarios. The automation team coded the scenario. So you have a, a you, not everybody was involved. No dev was involved in the process. Was right? it worth it? Uh, I don't think it was worth it. It, that it added more complexity, mainly due to the way the company was organized or in this case, disorganized because there was extra layers or extra divisions trying to trying to be organized, but it was actually disorganized. This is, and, and each team had their own stand up. Each team has the, had their own retro, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so some of the teams didn't even even hetero and they called it themselves an agile team an agile company that was not agile and i went over those uh what i believe it's an agile team and and, and not and i'm going to be putting here a, a post here so you can actually uh go over those also as well but that was definitely not an agile team uh it was a ish team but not a real agile team uh, second one, uh, second case. So we had a multidisciplinary team. QA usually did the validation and the automated, automated functional tests. When bottlenecks arose, uh, QAs helped devs and devs helped QAs. So we had a multidisciplinary team. Everybody did everything, but QA mainly did the validation and the automated functional test. We would first validate manually to make sure uh, it was working as expected based on the scenarios and if everything was expected then we would write the automation uh, if it was, something was not expected then we would let the the developers uh, fix it and we would work on that thing until everything was fixed and whenever there was some bottlenecks the, the QA would help the devs and vice versa right uh, we use that for functional UI <coughs> excuse me we use that for function UI and API tests and the BDD process was meeting with three friends, three amigos, always. So that was a real amazing experience. So it was totally worth it. The level of communication and collaboration was very high. So it was really, really, really cool to work with the three amigos all the time. So the, the person uh, in charge of the, of the communication between the client and us uh, the business analyst, she would schedule meetings with us uh, every time we there was a story. So she would kick off that story, bringing uh, at least one dev in, in one QA and herself into discussion the scenario. She would already come up with some basic scenarios written. We would go over it. She would tell uh, send us uh, that beforehand we would go over uh, on our own time and during the meeting we would discuss what we agreed what we did not agree and what we could add extra there so it was was really interesting uh, we used that a those scenarios as a actual live documentation the business was involved uh, everybody was involved so we could actually use those 
uh, and, and say this is what we want in the business perspective. The tests were part of our continuous integration strategy, uh, which was really interesting because we used at the time Jenkins, if I'm not mistaken, and Jenkins or any other CI, you, can, you have a link to the last build that was ran, right? And you have a link of the report. So in, whenever there is a new build, the link is the same. The link for the last report is always the same. So if somebody in the team, uh, PM or PM leaders or the boss or whatever, can have that link always, right? And if somebody asks you, what is your testing proof? Uh, what, are, what were the scenarios that you ran in that build? That link would always tell you which were the scenarios ran in the last successful build. So it was always up to date. Uh, you didn't have to maintain an extra documentation. You did not have to maintain a lot of stuff. Right? So it was really interesting. But there is a catch. Today, I see that those meetings with the three friends only happened because the business analyst embraced BDD, right? Once she left, we kind of lose a little bit of that because she was the one talking to the, the clients related to the business and she was the one writing the stories. So in that case, uh, she would bring us, she would call the meeting, she would invite us. So it was, up, it was her that made the process work because she embraced the idea, right? I had all the experience that the the business person did not embrace or didn't did not understand or, or didn't i don't know but didn't follow through and they would just have the 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 scenarios the, the stories written and will never have the time to discuss with us so in those cases then there are some mixed feelings related if it's going to work or not but then we comes to the third explanation in my final explanation related to this. So we can go to the uh, third case, which is we had also a multidisciplinary teams with DevOps culture. This team was more multidisciplinary than the other one because the other one, as I mentioned, it was multidis multidisciplinary related to QA and Dev, but there was a BA person uh, figuring out the business. In this third case, no, there was no person related, no person uh, doing the business analysis specifically. The devs and the QAs were the one doing that. Everyone uh, did everything, each person sharing the deepest knowledge. And this is what I call the T-shaped profile. I've been talking about this kind of profile for a long time. I have videos in 2017 talking about this. Uh, there are some folks uh, calling talking about this right now uh saying uh, like, like this is new but this is very old i've been talking about this for a long time already so the t-shaped profile is, is like this right you have your vertical line and you have your t line right your your uh, sorry you have your horizontal line and you have your vertical line in your horizontal line you have various knowledge uh shallow knowledge but various knowledge let's say uh, management, uh, I don't know, maybe story writing, whatever. And here you, you have your your T, which is your the, the the leg of a T, which is your vertical line. And this is where you have your experience in different areas of your T. Uh, so this is your T. So you have different levels, right? Different depths in your T's. Then you're going to you're going to have different areas here as well. So you, you might be you you might know a little bit more in one topic. In another topic, you know a little bit more. And in another topic, you it's your very bottom of your T. So you know a lot about that one. So that's your areas of expertise. And you have a, a, a QA that knows a lot about writing stories, not about, not, not a lot about testing, what kind of testing, testing strategy, how to test and, 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 and whatnot. And knows also about coding, but coding would be maybe in the middle of the T or more in the beginning of the T. While testing would be further down. 
a dive person would be the opposite, right? You, the deep down would be related to, to coding. And more towards the middle or the beginning of the T of, is going to be testing. So the same thing for a DevOps person, uh, a person, uh, sorry, not a DevOps person, but an infrastructure person. That person can code, that person can test, but her deepest knowledge would be on, on infrastructure stuff. So when you have a team with that kind of profile, then everybody learns from everybody. So a QA learns from a dev, from an infrastructure person, and vice versa. There's a lot of mingling related to that. So again, we had no business analyst. And in two years, we had five different POs. Some on board with BDD, others not. Some of them were really into uh, writing the, the scenarios, reviewing whatever scenarios we wrote or changes that we did, and others were not very, very into it. We did mainly API functional tests. The, this project was specifically serving an API. We did not have a AUI. And the BDD process was each person prepared a number of stories. So in each sprint, we would divide the number the, the stories in, uh, among the, the teammates and we would write those stories. Right? Uh, the conversation with POs, uh, we would do each person would do the conversation with PO about their specific story, the business that it was uh, that was time to tackle, and we would write the scenarios and the acceptance criteria with the revision of the PO. Right? We would uh, Review by another. We had a review by another team member. Somebody in the team would review every, every, after everything was done, and the final work would be sent to the PO. In this last step, would mainly be a synchronous chat uh, via through like a Slack or email. So was it worth it? Uh, I see that uh, we had some POs that were into it, some POs that they were not. So in this case, is it worth it? Because the first case, it was not worth it, right? This case was totally worth it. And why? Although some POs did not, did not participate much, the scenarios helped us a lot in, in various ways, right? So knowledge sharing the team. So we were able, whenever there was some new folks, uh, we were able to, uh, to onboard those people uh, better be or faster, let's say, because of those scenarios. Uh, also, the way that we worked, where everybody did everything, uh, whenever you join a team, you would have a story to to write to. So you, you have to talk to people, you have to know uh, who to talk to, or you have to know the business itself. It forced the people to get to know other, other team members or, or of the whole project. Uh, not necessarily only in our team, and also help them to understand the business better because they were involved in the actual uh, creation of the stories. Uh, the execution report in Jenkins also helped us a lot, uh, specifically because of the case that uh, the, the, what I described, what Jenkins does. It always has the link for the less successful build, and uh, the client always wanted to know what was tested before release. Instead of sending, I don't know, a Google Docs a spreadsheet or whatever scenarios we had, we would just send the link for the Cucumber report. And the Cucumber report is not like a, gen, a, 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 unit, a, J, a unit testing report, which is very cold still, right? If you see a JUnit uh, report, uh, it's, it's not very easy uh, for a non-technical person to read. But the Cucumber report, they are straightforward, the Cucumber scenarios, and if that scenario passed or not. So it's very straightforward what we executed in uh, by, by the link, or because it's HTML, you would actually see if those scenarios passed or not. So there was the evidence as well. And we also used to onboard new POs because we had five POs. So every time in two years, which is, which is a lot, like more than two POs, Two and a half POs per year, which is a lot to change. Uh, so we use those scenarios to, whenever a new PO came in, would say, hey, we have these scenarios. Uh, you, uh, 
some some of the people already knew what was the business trying to tackle some new in very deep more deep level and others more shallow level so the scenarios also help the PO to understand what we were doing not only the business side but what our team was actually testing for and what our actually team developed or, or what what our what our solution was and some of the POs really took the time to read it really took the time to say hey this is not what we should be doing right Re really not related to the solution but related to the business right so is this what we are doing actually this this i don't think this is what we we want and that PO you uh, took those scenarios and say hey this is what we are solving as a business and i don't think this is correct so he actually changed uh, the solution because uh, he thought that the solution that he was created based on the, the guides of the previous PO, it was not what the, what the actual business wanted and or not what the actual business wanted. It, was not, it would not solve uh, the business problem as well as he, the solution that this, this new guy created. So it, it, it helped a lot. So it was a very interesting process. So you can see that I brought three cases, two which was two which was totally worth it. One we had the whole uh, recipe of the three amigos to do everything. The second one we didn't, but it was still worth it. The first one we had the business people. We had sort like a a three amigos which or was not two amigos. But since not everybody was involved, that there was a lot of division, it was not worth it. Uh, and in the third case, we did not have a, a person dedicated to the business. It was the, 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 the technical team dealing with that, and it was very worth it. So, see, it's, it, it, I'm not the kind of person that I'm going to say, do this if you... If you do not do this, this is not going to work. You need to do it like this, you need to do it like that. Uh, this is what the, the the literature is talking about. You should. A lot, I see a lot of people doing that, right? Uh, saying that as their opinion is the the source of truth. That's a very academic ap approach, right? This is a very academic. This is a very testing approach. This is a very certification approach. I don't believe that because one thing is uh, you you are uh, answer a question or answer a test. Is it the wrong or is it the is it the right or is it the wrong, right? But then that test is only constrained. There is no live organic uh, group people mechanism involved. It is a hypothetical scenario, and this is these are the solutions for that, right? When you are talking about teams, now you're, you're involving people, different people, different backgrounds. So there are a lot of stuff to consider, right? So it's up to you to decide if BDD is worth it or not. I'm not going to tell it, tell you if you do not have a, the three amigos is not going to be worth it for you because I, I showed you in my opinion and in my case, in my experience, we had one case that we did not have the three amigos and it was worth it because I, everything that I just talked about, right? So it's up to you to decide and you need to have a critical thinking of what is out there, what is people telling you, which is, which is, good for you to take for you in which is not even what i'm telling right you need to have a, a, a critical thinking say okay what Rafael is telling me mm, i agree in part so if you agree in part of something that i'm telling you just use what, whatever you agree with me whatever you don't agree with me i'm glad i was able to give you uh, to give you another perspective and another way of uh, uh thinking and you took that and you use your critical thinking and say okay nice but i don't agree i prefer to do my way that's great too All right so thank you for watching so far uh if you haven't subscribed please do so i'm going to keep uh, the next video is going to be specific about specification by example, and we are getting more and more closer to start writing the, the actual automation, right? So thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell and I'll see you next video. Thank you.